I'm here with Jake, co-founder of London Shared, and right now we're going to talk best practice in rent to rent and give out some tips for landlords who are thinking of letting their property through a rent to rent agency. Um, so Jake, you've got five tips for us. Uh, number one. Number one, the first thing I would ask was probably the most important is what, uh, what contract will you use with the landlord or what contract will you use with me? Uh, it needs to be a commercial agreement. So what people need to realise is that someone doing rent to rent is making profit. So it is going to be a commercial agreement no matter what you call it. You call it a company lead agreement, in the eyes of the law it will still be commercial. So one of the key things with that, have they opted out of their right of tenure? So that basically means, are they going to be able to stay on beyond their term? They should opt out of it mm -hmm. so that the landlord knows that they're safe and that everything's covered. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would also add, actually, that when a third party introduces two other people to uh, one another in property real estate, they actually have to be a member of an ombudsman scheme as well by yeah. law. So I think we should get that point across as well to ask which uh, ombudsman scheme yeah. that the rent to rent agency is part of. That Absolutely. would be a good, good thing as Whether well. an agent as well, I think that's the first question anyone asks anyone with, with regards to letting out a property for sure. Yeah. So number two? Uh, number two would be what do you do with our tenants deposits? Mm -hmm. So we send them off, we send them to the DPS, the custodial mm -hmm. scheme. Mm -hmm. The big problem that I see with rent-to-rent -rent companies is they get caught with their hand in the cookie jar using deposits to be able to fund their business because they run out of money and so they think, well, I'll just use this little bit this time, mm -hmm. then I'll put it back and it's basically it skyrockets from there. We've seen it happen time and time again. I'm sure you probably do a few, did a few articles about that. Mm -hmm. So the key thing, what are you going to do with the deposit? Can you prove that it's going to be sent away? And they should be able to do that very easily. Absolutely. And then number three is really based around um, the robustness of the so-called guaranteed rent. Absolutely. So what's their financial situation? Can you speak to their accountants and verify their standing? So mm -hmm. if they're going to be paying 30, 40 grand a year in rent, you need to be able to see that they can actually afford it. Mm -hmm. What do their accounts look like? Have a look on company's house. How long have they been around for? What's mm -hmm. their name? Have they changed their name? Mm -hmm. How many directorships has this person had? There's a lot of people that are unfortunately unscrupulous in the rent to rent industry, so it's worth double checking everything you can. I agree with that, particularly as well in the context that you might hand over a property for up to five years. So yeah. you need to know that that person has a track record of sustainability, don't you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, a property is the biggest asset most people will ever have in their entire lives, and it's, it's your nest egg. Mm. So you can't just give it on to any other person. You need to actually do your due diligence. Mm. If it takes an extra week, so be it. If they can't provide all those facts, then there's something fishy going on. Number four. Number four, what contracts do you use with your tenants? Yep. It should be assured short hold tenancy agreements. Mm -hmm. People say they use licenses, but it's wrong. They'll use a license so that they don't have to register a deposit, and then they can use it as working capital. So mm -hmm. I see that a lot, and it shouldn't, it shouldn't be the case. It's an assured short hold tenancy for the room with a license agreement for the common areas. That's from a shared accommodation point of view. And finally, what's your fifth tip for landlords thinking of using a rent-to-rent -rent company? Well, you need to ask them whether it's going to be an HMO. Mm -hmm. So if the property is licensable, then you actually need to apply for quite a lot of things mm -hmm. and you need to make sure that it's fire safe. Mm -hmm. Regardless of this, you want to see what sort of fire safety precautions they have in place. Mm -hmm. So for our non-HMO uh, licensable properties, mm -hmm. we do biannual uh, inspections. Yep. So risk assessments, basically, is what they're called. Yep. All of our properties have fire alarms which are tested very frequently. If they're an HMO, you need to work with the council. You need to make sure that you've got the fire doors, self closes, three hinges, uh, all your fire safety equipment, everything done properly and you need the actual licence itself. And that is a key, key thing because quite often a landlord will rent to this tenant thinking, okay, great, it's their problem, nothing to do with me. If something goes wrong and there wasn't an HMO in place, they're going to go back to the landlord, I'm sure, yep. and check to see whether they were a part of it. And you don't want to leave yourself open to that, but also the safety of your tenants, whether they're yours or by proxy, you want to make sure they're okay. No, the buck always stops with the landlord. That yeah. is such an important thing that every landlord needs to be aware of, no matter what legislation, uh, whoever you're dealing with, the buck always stops with the landlord. Yeah. Um, just to finish then, at the end of a rent-to-rent -rent agreement, yeah. would you return the property to the landlord in the same state that you found it, i.e. DHMO it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So as long as you've got a certain type of HMO, which is a, a smaller one, less than six people, mm -hmm. you don't need to apply for planning permission, depending on what borough you're in. Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of the HMO, it's just we don't reapply for the HMO license mm -hmm. and it doesn't change anything mm -hmm. but you are I would say to any landlord don't take my word for it do your own due diligence mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. anyone you speak to regarding HMOs give the council a call because mm -hmm. every council is different mm -hmm. 
And I think we both agree that these questions that we're encouraging you to ask, if an agent is ethical, they won't mind this kind of, uh, these kind of questions. In fact, they'll actually welcome them. And you as an agency want educated landlords yeah. who understand the whole model, don't you? Absolutely. I think any business should be more than transparent in the way that they do things. And open book policy is the best way, no matter what you're doing, but especially in an industry like the rent-to-rent -rent industry where you can't be regulated. So the best thing you can do, open your doors and answer any questions that they may come up with. Absolutely. Well, we 100% support that and we hope that we're bringing some transparency to the rent to rent industry through our rent to rent tribe which uh, we're very happy to have you guys contributing to. So Thank thanks you. very much to Jake from London Shared.